today I'm making one of my favorite crock pot chili recipes. This is going to be good. To start this chili, I'm going to prep a lot of ingredients. It does seem like it's a lot, but it's totally worth it. And I'm starting off with the puree and seasonings. So here I'm going to bring to a boil a pan. You could use a pot. I have four guajillo chiles going in that I've already cleaned and removed the stems. Once it starts to simmer or gently boil, I'm going to turn off the heat and let it steep for about 15 minutes or until they have softened. So here I'm just going to set it aside and work on other ingredients. For example, I'll be using a tablespoon of these whole cumin seeds and black peppercorn mix. And I like to use my pestle and mortar and just grind this up. Here I'm going to add my softened steep chilies into a blender cup. I'm also adding a cup of that steeping liquid. If it's bitter, you might want to give it a taste. You could use broth or water. So this is going into my blender cup. For a little bit of heat or spice, it's not really spicy. I'm using two tablespoons of chopped chipotle peppers in adobo sauce. Here I have that crushed or grinded up cumin seed black peppercorn mix. It's a tablespoon. If you want less, you can add less. Here I'm just going to add a pinch of dried oregano leaves right into the blender cup. I have one and a half tablespoons of beef bouillon. Here I have four tablespoons of chili powder. This is a light chili powder and one tablespoon of smoked paprika. This is two tablespoons of dark brown sugar. I also have a quarter cup of masa harina. This is like the Maseca brand. I'll also be adding three to four cloves of garlic. I like using Hugo de Maggi, so I'm going with one tablespoon in this recipe. You can skip this and just add extra salt. Here I'm going to add one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. And now just blend. And things kind of got really thick in the blender cup, so I'm going to add an extra cup of water. In hindsight, I probably should have added beef stock or beef broth because I will be adding that later. So anywho, blend well. I am going to be using two and a half pounds of chuck roast meat, and here I have two pounds of 8515 ground beef. To prep the chuck roast, I'm going to cut it into small cubed pieces, kind of like morsels. I love the texture of chuck roast and ground beef in my chili. And I also saved the fat and cubed it and just discard the sinew. These are tough fibrous pieces that you really can't chew. So in a preheated pan, I'm going to add some cooking oil and I'm going to start with the chunks of fat. I want it to render some of that beef fat and it does have a little bit of meat on it. And I'm just going to start to saute and brown that. And I probably know what some of you are thinking. If this is a crock pot recipe, you could just throw everything in the crock pot without browning it. But browning the meat first really elevates the flavor of this chili. It truly is one of my favorite chilies to make. So I'm just going to add layers of the beef and continue the process in sauteing and browning this really well. Take your time with this. And you want to do this in a single layer. So you want to brown in batches. If I just dumped all the meat here, it probably would be a lot harder to get it to brown. So this is what I'm looking for. Brown pieces like this. I also want to mention that the browning process goes through stages. For example, like this, where it renders its natural juices and starts to boil. And eventually it looks like this, where it evaporates and really starts to brown. And this is exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm going to put this first batch right into the crock pot vessel here and repeat the process for the rest of my chuck roast. Okay, so last batch of chuck roast going in. Now it's time for the ground beef. And use the same principle. I'm adding it all, and I'm going to brown very well. Take your time. It's going to render juices. It's going to render fat. But you want to keep going until you start to see it brown. Okay, now for the onions. I have one small to medium onion that I diced and I'm going to saute this in the same pan. And at this point, 
you saute the onion, you create a delicious fond because again, that is flavor. Here I'm using 12 ounces of a dark beer. I'll say this is optional. If you want to skip the beer, use broth or stock, but I like beer in this. Like I said, this is one of my favorite chilies. So I'm just going to start scraping up all of the fond and let the beer simmer for a couple of minutes. And this is flavor. It smells amazing in my kitchen. And I can't stress enough to you, if you're gonna try it, try it with a beer. Okay, turning that off, and this is going right into my crock pot. And now for the puree that we made earlier, going in. And I don't know why I didn't do this earlier, but I had beef stock, so I should have just added beef stock instead of extra water. Here, I'm going to add one cup into the blender cup, swish it around to get any residual puree that stayed behind, and that's going in. And I will be listing what I use today in the description below for measurements and ingredients. I'm going to give this a mix. And remember, seasoning and salt and things like that, it really is to your preference. So taste your food and adjust. I'm going to add one and a half to two teaspoons of salt. And I think that's enough salt for this recipe. But like I said, adjust to your preference. Give that a mix. And it's, I could eat this like this. I don't care if the meat's tough. It smells amazing. So this does take time in the crock pot, but so worth it. Okay, so I'm gonna cover with a lid, set it to high, and I'm gonna let it cook for about four to five hours on low, six to eight. And once it's done, this is what you end up with. A beautiful sheen of rendered fat from this chili and I am going to remove it. I'll leave some in there. I can't get it all out but I'll do the best I can by skimming the top here and just place it in a bowl. Sometimes I use this to dip corn tortillas and make quesadillas on the stove top. I don't know. You could do that. Save it for later use. And while I'm doing that I also want to mention you definitely can use four pounds of ground beef in this recipe and skip the chuck roast. But if you can, spring for the chuck roast because the texture of the tender morsels of chuck roast and the tender ground beef, it's so good. I also made cornbread and I wasn't gonna film this part. I ran out of yellow cornmeal to make it from scratch, but guess what? I had a box of Jiffy and I doctored it up. So what I did is dumped the box of Jiffy in the bowl. I added three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour, a teaspoon of baking powder, I added a tablespoon of sugar, and then two eggs and milk until I got this cornbread batter. So yeah, that's what I did to make more of something. In a buttered cast iron skillet, this is about eight or nine inches, I'm adding it and into a 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes or until it's done. So I'm gonna carefully remove this from the oven and guess what? Dinner is ready and I'm excited because chili and cornbread is a favorite in my house. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of butter on top of the cornbread and not bad for a box of Jiffy Mix that I doctored up. I do that all the time. So I'm gonna slice a piece and I want you to see, it came out fluffy with that extra flour. The bottom cooked really well, so success in my opinion. So I like to add it to a bowl and ladle a scoop of chili right on top and you can see people have already attacked my crock pot of chili but this is dinner and it's so good i hope you give this recipe a try i hope you like it and thanks for watching